So this time we're looking at standard three, which is plan for and implement effective teaching and learning. As always, you can always go to the ATSA website. This has been upgraded recently uh, and look at the teacher standards uh, videos and toolkits. To get started, 3.1, establish challenging learning goals. Now, this is all about knowing the students and setting goals that are going to really task them. So differentiating your lessons, differentiating classes, making sure that each student has their own um, learning plan. Now you can see here that this person has discussed about using podcasts, videos, uh, going to online tests, Scoodle, so giving examples of ICT, and then they're giving a really good example of how they use it in their, in their biology class. 3.2 is plan, structure, and sequence learning plans. This is really important for what you guys are doing at the moment. You're working on your unit plans and getting ready to go out on practicum. So here, knowing how to plan and set up a unit plan is really important. So again, this person suggested unit plan, semester, year-long plan, and so on, go, how we go from one topic to the next, and also building on the foundation uh, from the last one. As ex choosing the right uh, ICT components is good, and they've given an example of using Khan Academy for chemistry, and making sure that their lessons are created and they can complete them and view them um, online. Uh, this could have gone into a little bit more detail to give exact uh, examples, not just Khan Academy. So I would suggest this person could have gone a bit further, but otherwise a good, good post. 3.3 is using teaching strategies. So this is quite an in-depth one, and especially when you're talking about ICT. There are so many tools that I've demonstrated that you can use. Um, now in this case, this person talking about websites, journals, video clips, podcasts, and so on. There are so many tools, and they've given a good example of how they're going to use Google Docs, Prezi, Wikis uh, to teach their class. So there's lots and lots of depth in this one. Select and use resources. So this is different to the last one. Instead of select and use technology, we're talking about resources. Now a lot of this could be derived from Scoodle or from online. Um, this person has looking at what activities will engage the students, so that's important. So if they're going to go through and look at what they're going to do, make sure they're using .edu. If you're using .edu, this is an educational filter and it means the website is based on an educational organisation. Um, 3.5 is use effective classroom communication. Now obviously a good one to use is email or Edmodo. Um, communication within the class allows students to interact with the teacher, parents and everyone else uh, effectively. Uh, now you might use a, a video, in this case talking about using video, setting up classroom rules and values. We saw this the other day, that it's important that if you're gonna have an online class, you set classroom boundaries the same way as you would set uh, boundaries within a real class, you set the boundaries within a virtual class. If things are not uh, progressing as you expect or as you want, you need to uh, then reinforce the rules and regulations of that class. This person just suggested they could also just use a PowerPoint slide um, with where to go from task one to task two and so on. So using the uh, PowerPoint as a form of communication. 3.6 is evaluate and improve teaching programs. Now this happens all the time at uni when you're doing the CELTS. However, you, when you're in class, it's really good to do uh, some kind of feedback for you with, uh, to see how the students are understanding. Now you could use Socrative or Poll Everywhere if you wanted in media online feedback, uh, instant feedback to see whether the students understand what's going on. Um, or you could use um, interactive features on the interactive whiteboard. 3.7, this is one of the most important ones. Engage parents and carers in the educative process. We've discussed once before about the teaching triangle, that the teachers, the students, and the parents are all part of the triangle and teaching the students how to learn, uh, and as well as the content. So in this case, this person suggested that parents are really important. You need, if you can keep communication lines open with the parents, it's a good, it's a good way of reinforcing what's going on at school, also the parents can reinforce what's going on at home, and the students realize that, hey, the teacher and the parents are talking. Um, one of the easiest ways of communicating is through email. Mobile phones are always good as well. Uh, if you're using Edmodo, you can get a parent account. Uh, I you also, another a way that some people do it here at this school is they put sections in the assignments that say get your parents to give you feedback on this. Uh, now that's a, a nice easy way of getting the parents to give the students work a, a, a look over and keep them f feels like they're involved in the in the classroom. Also means if students are saying, oh, I don't have any homework and there's nothing involved in the teacher, uh, the parent talking to the student, then it identifies that the student's not sharing. Okay, so see how you go. I realize that uh, standard three is quite long. There's seven of them. That's why I've tried to keep the other section a little bit shorter. So good luck. So one more to go.